What up, Marsh Pod? Coming to you literally minutes after the ending of maybe the preseason game of the year, Shy Town Hoopers Only Invitational, Lakeshore Drive, Team 6, which we had to had to flip the name. Uh, if you tuned into the broadcast, Team 6, because we had, what, five teams, seven, six teams that apparently weren't creative enough to come up with names more than numbers. Um Team six or the six wins in a absolute thriller, twenty eight to twenty six. And I mean, takeaways are are the obvious ones, and there are four major takeaways, and, and by extension, that four major players that we should leave Chicago thinking differently about, and that's Jace Miguez out of Texas, that's Kirby Ordway out of Indiana. They led the six to the title game. Uh, their stats in the title game, again, we're counting ones and twos, not twos and threes. Ordway, 14 points, 11 of 18 shooting from the floor, 3 of 4 from deep. Miguez, 9 points, 7 of 13 shooting from the floor, 2 of 3 from deep. And that's it. following Miguez, who was absolutely incredible in the win over Beyond the Arc. Scored 10 points, 7 of 10, perfect 3 of 3 from deep. The shot-making portfolio for Jason Miguez may be unmatched. Uh, in SimWorld Hoops, and we get into hyperbole a little too often in SimWorld, but the shot making that he had rivaled that of Cooper, King, and Cross. And the the comparison that you make there that I pulled from Miguez, and we'll get to Ordway and we'll get to, to Lakeshore Drive in a second, but Miguez was, was the main standout. He looked like Luka Doncic in the command that he had over the game, over his shot, over his ability to make shots and get to the spots that he wanted to be. 6'4 guard really looked a lot bigger when he went up against Dre Carvel in the the championship game, against Dino O'Hearn in the matchup in the semis against Beyond the Arc. Miguez had a great game in the opening round against Bad Boys Basketball. You want to talk about an impressive run. There were, what, eh, eight teams in this tournament. Five of them, teams two, three, four, six, and seven, didn't have names. There were three named teams, Lakeshore Drive, Bad Boys Basketball, Beyond the Arc. Those three teams accounted for more than half, if not all of not all of them, but the vast majority, all but three of the uh, signed players in the league. That includes Dre Carvel, that includes Lorenzo Phenom, that includes uh, Dino Ahern, Christian Kelly, the list goes on. The six, led by Jace Miguez, beat all of them. They beat the three named teams in the Chi-Town Hoopers Only Invitational because of Jace Miguez. He was absolutely incredible. His stock should be rising. Very talented recruit in a deep Texas state. Normally, I would say, hey, H-Town Hoopers, Lone Star Basketball Club, let's take a peek. But they're so incompetently run that I don't know that he's staying in Texas. But an absolutely incredible tournament. Jace McGez, and, and we've seen this a lot in, in the preseason tournaments. Guys coming out of obscurity, establishing themselves as legitimate stars. And what does that mean? I'll, I'll get to that in a second. On the other side, Kirby Ordway was absolutely incredible in the stretch run of that championship game. He wasn't really doing a lot in that game, wasn't really playing, wasn't really impacting the game in the way that Jace McGez was. Jace McGez had a stretch where I think he scored about five straight points that got them, I think it was 18 all up to 23. Might have been a little bit earlier in the game than that. But Kirby Ordway showed a shot-making portfolio that kind of just came out of thin air. He was He wasn't really making a lot of shots early on. He wasn't really getting to the rim, and then out of nowhere, he's just blasting through the defense. He was making really free free runs at the hoop against Norman Nations and against Angelo Roman. It was an impressive performance by Ordway, and the way in which Ordway and Miguez operated on the court together, it seemed as if they'd done it before. It didn't seem as if they had just been put together for the first time on the court for this Invitational tournament. It looked like they had been playing side by side. If they were to be playing side by side, that's a formidable, formidable duo. So if I'm a team that's sitting in that kind of Midwest part of the state, you know, Texas, um, St. Louis, with Beyond the Arc, they got a firsthand look at that. I might take a hard look and say, do we make a run at both of them because they just looked like they belonged on the same team. All right, 
other side. Because despite the fact that Lakeshore Drive lost this game, because one, there's actually really no no quote unquote losers because right these games don't really count for much. But Drake Harvell and Norman Nations did not deserve to lose that game. Each of them had ten points. Harvell went seven of thirteen, three of four from deep. Nations went eight of fourteen, two of three from deep. And this is a continuation. I'm gonna give me one second as I try to find their matchup from earlier this season, where it was really the kind of return, if you will, of uh, of of Norman Nations to this team. Again, we always do this great, great radio guys. We're gonna we're gonna look for something that you guys can't see. Um, okay, here we go. We were in the Big Apple uh, Classic. Team Loveless. It was Norman Nations. It was Drake Carvel. It was Kyrie Holtzclaw. Holtzclaw, another one of those guys that's really, really came out of nowhere. They won the Big Apple Classic, and it was this statement tournament from both Norman Nations and Drake Carvel, but especially for Norman Nations. It was, hey, Drake Carvel doesn't have a lot of help, and that was one of the, the things that I admittedly kind of said when Brian Loveless made the switch from the Bay Area to take on uh, Lakeshore Drive, and the, what do you have? This isn't a better roster than what you left with Lakeshore Drive than what you had in, in Bay Area. Norman Nations is much better. He has been a much better basketball player in the preseason. Drake Harvell has kind of reestablished himself after kind of maybe falling off a little bit last season. He's back, but Norman Nations has established the ability to be an incredible number two the backcourt for Team Loveless or, or Lakeshore Drive is legitimate, and this was a proving point of that. Their defense is a little suspect, but they went up against Jason McGuinness, who may be the best scorer that we've had since Cooper King across. At least he's showing that signs of it in this tournament. And then Kirby Orway, who is a really explosive athlete, they held their own. They didn't see that fall off. They didn't see the explosion on the offensive end on the other side and just let that kill them. In terms of momentum, they stuck with it 28 26. There was a massive, massive couple buckets. Uh, I think it was Norman Nations that gave them a two, that gave them a 26 uh, 25 lead before another double by Jace Maguez took it right back to 27 28 before, of course, the game winning bucket by uh, Tyrell Thompson. Norman Nations and Drake Carvel have established themselves. That's a legitimate backcourt, and this was proof of that. Now, what does all of this mean? Because every single time that we have big performances like this, we say, well, maybe he's the best player in Simmerall Tubes. Well, maybe he's the best player. Is it Trey Hyman? Is it Xavier Pope? Is it Jason McGuez? De'Aaron Cruz has been showcasing a lot better basketball than what I talked about a couple weeks ago with him, where I felt that he was only offensive-oriented. He's starting to have a more complete game. What this all means is that maybe we don't have a bona fide number one. Think think the NBA post-Michael Jordan, where... You have, is it is it KG? Is it Kobe Bryant? Is it Shaq? There was a lot of different guys that had legitimate arguments for being the best player in the NBA. Cooper Kingy Cross was the best player in Sim World Hoops last year. And I'm not comparing Cooper Kingy Cross to Michael Jordan. But what's a really great sign that these preseason tournaments have shown us is that the talent level for the upcoming season of Sim World Hoops is far superior. The product on the court right now, even these pickup games with no coaching, is far superior than what we got last season. That's not to discredit any of the coaches. That's not to discredit any of the the players from last year. But the talent level that we have right now, the player pool, is much, much better than we had a season ago. And that's great for the league because the games that we just watched tonight are a perfect encapsulation of how much better The game of basketball is being played. And I can't wait. I said this on Tuesday. I cannot wait for March where we get actual meaningful games where it's not just bragging rights. It's not just I'm going to hop into Discord and and, and brag about this win. It's games with a win-loss record, with drama, with stakes. I'm going to be a broken record. I can't wait till March because of this tournament, because of the Chi-Town Hoopers Only Invitational, showing us the amount of talent that we have. And we had, like I said, maybe the best game this entire preseason in Chicago last night. All right, you guys have a great weekend. We'll be back on Tuesday.